Hi everyone and welcome. I am, as always, very excited to share this next tutorial. So this one focuses on how I use one of the default brushes included with the app. It is the Paper Daisies brush and there are a bunch of uh, sort of nature inspired brushes like this. And when I first started using Procreate a couple of years ago, I was very excited about these brushes because I was still, well, I still am, but even more so at the time, was really working on my drawing skills. And this saved me from having to draw every single leaf or detail in the background. And then I could really spend the time drawing my animals or characters or whatever was the main subject of that illustration. Also at this time, I was recovering from a hand injury that made it super hard to draw for longer periods of time or draw anything detailed. So these brushes were also really helpful in that way. And over time, I figured out a few little tricks with color and layers that helped me make these brushes work even better. So that's what I want to share today. If you do follow along and create art with this tutorial, I would love to see it, and you can share it with me on Instagram at ZeraCatStudio. In the description box below, I have a link to my website where you can download the color palette for this project. A list of the brushes we will be using and where to find them is also in the description. And I'm working on a 12 by 12 inch canvas. I think that's it, and let's get started. Starting with the lightest blue in the palette and using the Paper Daisy brush, which can be found in the organic tab of the brush library, I'm just going to start by going over my whole canvas very lightly using the side of my pencil and just starting to build up some of these shapes. I have the brush set to the highest size and full opacity but if I use the side of my pencil it will give me these sort of more translucent shapes and then if I tap with the tip of my pencil it will give me more opaque shapes and the sizes will also depend on I don't know I think it's a combination of random and pressure I'm not even 100% sure but kind of just play with it and get a feel for it. And for this first layer, I want to go in the furthest of any of the plant layers. So this is going to be the furthest one back, and then we're gonna keep on building on top of this. So I want to make sure that I can see it underneath all of the other plants that we're going to be adding. So I'm just gonna keep on building up and I want to have, I don't know, just kind of like a, a circle in the middle I don't want the circle to be too big because we're only going to be drawing a little bit of the cat and we want it to be sort of peeking up. So we don't want to leave too much space or we'll have to draw more of the cat. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense, but that's my thought here. And I think this is looking pretty good. So I'm going to create a new layer by going to the layers tab, tapping this plus sign. I have a new layer and I'm going to my colors, choosing the medium blue, and then using the same brush and the same technique, I'm just going to start tapping around the edge of my canvas. And you can even tap like right on the very edge of the corner or the canvas, and that will sort of make the shapes uh, go off the page a little bit which I like. And then if it gets to be too much at any point, you can just double tap for undo and take anything away if it gets too far into your circle. So then I'm going to go back to my layers menu and I'm going to use two fingers to swipe right on that layer that we just made. It took me a couple tries there, but then once you have the checkerboard back, you know it's good. This turns on alpha lock and then going back to my colors and choosing the darkest blue using my same brush and just tapping around. And this will create some more variation within the shapes that we already worked on for this layer. 
and that's looking good. So now I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to repeat the same process that we just did on layer two for our green leaves and then again for our pink. So I'm starting with the medium shade of green and repeating the process of tapping around the edge of my canvas until I'm happy with the amount of green leaves. And I just always wanna make sure that I can still see through to my other layers. And then I am using two fingers to swipe right on that layer, going to the darker shade of green and tapping again. Then creating a new layer and doing this process one more time, starting with the lighter shade of pink and tapping around the edge of my canvas. And then I am also using the side of my pencil again to create some more of those very light and translucent shapes as well with the pink. Swiping right with two fingers on that layer to alpha lock and using the darker pink to add the shading. All right, so we're all done with the background or we're all done with the plants. I guess it's actually the foreground. And we're going to create the cat next. So I'm creating a new layer, dragging that behind all of the other layers. I am selecting black and in the brush menu under the painting tab, switching to the flat brush, creating a sort of like a half circle for the cat's head. And then I'm just going to keep building it up until it is about halfway up the circle, maybe a little less than halfway. You can also draw a curved line and hold your pencil down at the end that will snap it into place if you want to make it a little more perfect. And then I'm just drawing two triangles on either side of the head to suggest this is a cat. And, you know, if you look in the layers menu, you can see that it's really not a very well, like if the plants weren't there, this would not be the best drawing of a cat. But <laughs> because most of it's covered up, it works. And I'm definitely not worrying too much about making it perfect or what it looks like underneath. Switching now to the blender tool, this finger up here on the top right, and I have it set to the wet acrylic, which can also be found under the painting tab. And I'm going to use that to create some fur on the top of my cat's head. So I am just dragging up and blending out in the direction I want the fur. And I kind of want it going diagonally towards the center so that it meets in like a little point on the top of his head. I'm using the side of my pencil and gradually doing this. And then I'm just doing a little bit on the edge of each ear. Now, after doing that, I feel like my cat is a little too far up in my circle. So I'm going to tap this arrow on the top and just drag the whole layer down. And then also I'm adjusting the angle because it was a little bit crooked. Now for the eyes, I'm going to create a new layer above my cat, switching to the medium green shade, still using my flat brush, but reducing the size a bit and creating the first eye. You can draw a circle holding your pencil down at the end. This will snap it into a circle shape for you. And then I am tapping the arrow on the top to select the whole circle and move it where I want exactly on the face. Going to my layers menu, swiping left on this layer, duplicating it. And then I have my second eye and I'm dragging that where I want it to be using my arrow tool. Once I have both eyes where I want, I am pinching those two layers together, then creating a new layer, and this will be for the centers of the eyes. So I am selecting black, 
And I did try a couple different shapes for the pupils. So first I am doing ovals and I I like it. Um, for some reason in the moment, I did not like it. So I'm deleting those now and changing it to round um, pupils. And I did end up liking that a lot better. So I kept that. So this one on the right is just a little too close to the edge of the eye. So I am going up and grabbing the selection tool, circling just that side and adjusting it right to the center of the eye. And then I am going to create one more layer. This is going to be for the highlight. So I'm choosing white, reducing the size of my brush. and placing the highlight right where the black and the green meet um, on each eye. And that's it for this one. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to reach out and I'll see you next time.